Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest has <laughs> graced the stage opening for artists such as Justin Timberlake and Boys to Men. On the heels of receiving an NAACP Image Award nomination for Outstanding New Artist, please welcome R&B singer Omar Wilson. Yay! Yay! Good morning. Omar, Good morning, well, I tell audience. you, look here. I say your shoes are so sharp, I was nervous to walk near them for cutting myself. I mean, well, I, I did bring a couple band-aids just in case. Just in case, because you, you clean it in the board of health. Hey, oh, oh, wow. I'm just saying, you clean it in the board of health. That my father's line. That's God, very old God school. I just told my age. No, no, that's just game. That's just called game. But speaking of age, the NAACP Image Awards is a, a very long-standing and, and uh, well-respected uh, organization, mm -hmm. and you are now nominated for Best New Artist. How wow. does it feel to be in the category at the NAACP Image Awards? Wow. For best new artists. Well, I mean, first it's the 50th annual. Mm. Which is See, hello, somebody. And a culmination Eight. in itself. Mm. Yes. <laughs> and um, it's 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 a confirmation of so many years of, of hard work, mm -hmm. like dedication, ups and downs. I mean, as you both know, in this music industry, it takes you through a roller coaster. Of How long you been doing it? Since I was six. Golly, Jeepers alive! Come yeah. on, somebody. Learn how well, to you know, eat and went let's to church, take it back start there, singing. Then. When did you first realize that you wanted to pursue music as a career? Mm. And like at six years old, because wow. my, you know, my parents had us singing, you know, and oh, I'm sure all lined up in the road mm -hmm. around that time. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know I wanted to be a career. So when did wow. you know? Well, I think it 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 just it's what God placed upon me. Mm -hmm. You know, I was born. I learned to walk. She put me in church at six. I sung my first solo at seven, and then from there it was just uh, a confirmation of this is what I need to be. Not even what I'm like searching for. It was what I was destined to become. So mm. cultivated over the years, building this story and really taking uh, uh, God-given talent and turning it into something that is great now. You know what? <clears throat> you have won Showtime at the Apollo three times. Now I have done Showtime at the Apollo and that crowd <laughs> is out of order. Vicious. When I tell you, they will stone face you down to the floor. <laughs> but you have, you have won it three times. Um, in hindsight, and looking at your career now, do you think that going through that pre has prepared you for these bigger stages? Oh, definitely. Yeah. It was the 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 founding blocks of who I am. Mm -hmm. Not only just being in that environment, feeling the energy, knowing the legendary people that walked on that mm -hmm. stage, but I got such an education on what my voice entailed mm -hmm. and uh, uh, a synopsis of. of where I need to go as right, an artist. Right. So to this day, I always tell people like the Apollo was my Ivy League college. Mm, you know, it was good. my building foundation. And even when you look at all of these shows that they have that are catering to music now, yeah. it really came from the Apollo experience. Right. Yeah, that's so, true. Do you so, feel like that Apollo experience helped to catapult your singing career? Definitely. Your music career? Definitely, because mm -hmm. it gave me um, it gave me the knowledge, the respect, and the honor of what music is about mm -hmm. so I come from a different place it's not of course we want money success and you know to have every amenity at our beck and call mm -hmm. but at the end of the day I want to live forever and I can through music as yeah. I learn from I know, these legendary right. people at the Apollo. Mm. Now you it, out of all the genres I mean you've, you've sung on stages with um, many different genres people of many different genres but you have chosen R&B music. Hello somebody give me a pass. It's our time. Okay time. and in your new your new single love song is R&B. Right. Why R&B and talk to us about this single. I mean, the single love song is about true love. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about, like I said, waking up in, in the morning next to your significant other. Mm -hmm. You know, having somebody mm -hmm. you can go through the good, the bad, and the ugly with, and you know got your back no matter what. Yeah. Um, and my new album, Living Legend, mm -hmm. the reason why I even named it that, because that's what I've always worked hard to do, is exude legendary understanding, mm -hmm. is to learn from legendary individuals like a Sam Cooke, a David Ruffin, mm -hmm. a Otis Redding. A, you show, a, a you got the Pettigrew. tone in the yeah. throat. Yeah. I hear, I hear David it down to the, the vocal cords. Yeah. And the talking. <laughs> all the way down to that resin. It's around in the resin. Yeah. All in there. <laughs> <laughs> But tell us about the making of this album. Mm -hmm. What was that? What was that situation like for you? We wanted to encompass everything that I believe is missing in R&B music. Mm. So yeah. when I listen to a Marvin Gaye or Otis Redding or a Sam Cooke, it's not copying what they did, but it's taking the things that to this day will always make them great. Mm. You know that, that, that hair that stands on on the back of your neck, that that goosebump feeling. So mm -hmm. really 
making an album that stands the test of time and that will be here forever. Okay. Well, well, you titled this album uh, Living Legend. Mm -hmm. yes. Speaking of that, what do you have to say about uh, <laughs> Mr. Jacquees? <laughs> so, the king. The king. The king. The king, the king. The I mean, king I mean, of army. I, I believe everybody is a king or a queen in their mm. own right. Mm. So if you don't believe you're great, no one else will. That's huh. true. You know? That's real talk. Yes. So, I mean, but at the time, like I said, when all the when Marvin Gaye and Otis Redding was out, you know, nobody was worrying about who was the king. Everybody was the best at what they do, mm -hmm. what you bring to the table, what you bring to the table, and that's up to the world to decide. Yeah. Let me tell you what my mother said. She said, "There's a mighty poor frog that doesn't praise his own pond." Ooh, mm -hmm. you know, your mama got all the Ooh. nuggets though. She stayed with Ooh. a good saying. Yeah. You know? But she's right. If you don't, if, if you don't praise the foundation, you you lost in the sauce. You ain't, you, know, you don't really know how to even respect who you are. I know that's if right. If you don't know your history. Okay, on my last but not least, if it's one thing, one accomplishment that you uh, wanna wanna have before you are done with this R and B game, done with singing, period. What would that one accomplishment be? When you're dead and gone, what do you want people to say about your your brand? I just want them to know that no matter what, you know, I'm probably maybe one of the flawed most flawed people that you've met today, but you can go through things, have adversity, and make whatever you want in this life if you keep God first, believe in yourself, and keep good people. And on that good note, yes. <laughs> thank you for joining us, Omar. His new single, Love Song, is available now on all digital platforms.